Welcome to Date with Danu. One of the pressing issues that we are facing today is tourism. Throughout our time in school, we have been taught about many things that Sri Lanka is known for, but none of which is actually bringing in the money. Its tourism is what we really depend on. To speak more about it, of course, I have two gentlemen who have sat on that main seat when it comes to tourism. I'm happy to have Rohan Tata Korala and Kishu Gomez. Yeah, my name is Kishu Gomez. I've been in the corporate world for a couple of uh, decades now, uh, right throughout working for US multinationals before I took over tourism. And uh, it's I who had to battle with uh, the recovery process. Uh, post uh, East attack and uh, now I'm heading a group of my uh, cosmetic companies and uh, trying to empower the younger generation with all what I know for them to be able to conquer the world to be able to achieve economic independence for my motherland. Good evening um, to every one of you. Uh, my name is Dr. Rohan Tatukurala. Um, I have about 17 years of experience working for British and American multinationals in brand marketing and country management and thereafter I decided to serve Sri Lanka for a period of about five years where I served as chairman of uh, Sri Lanka Export Development Board, uh, Sri Lanka Tourism and of course uh, Lanka Satosa and, um, and now thereafter I went on to serve the United Nations uh, for UNOPS heading portfolio development of Sri Lanka and Maldives um, and subsequently now I head the artificial intelligence company for brand mapping for Sri Lanka Maldives in Pakistan, uh, which is one of the one of the top South Asian organizations. I'm here to uh, do a program recording with uh, Danu. Danu is a brand uh, in this country, and whatever he does, he does in style. Uh, so we are here today to talk about the tourism industry, which is uh, a very critical and crucial topic uh, to to be discussed. Uh, and uh, looking forward to a very successful uh, recording. We are here to discuss about Sri Lanka uh, and the total exports of um, um, tourism uh, on how I think we've got to look at uh, these challenging times and how, what is our role in this country. So I'm told it's in 1966 that Sri Lanka decided to concentrate on tourism, to brand it, to structure it, to sexify it, and make the world see what Sri Lanka is all about. From 1966 to now, we have just completely gone back in time. Speaking to me about tourism and where we stand as Sri Lanka is going through a crisis and we need to find a way to bring ourselves back up above this level of water where we are choking under, I wanted to speak to you all. Let's start off. So it was you and then Kishu took over mm. in terms of the last few years. Rohanta, I'll start with you. How was it for you to be on that seat? Uh, and you were there during the joint coalition uh, government where uh, Ranil was prime minister and Maitri Pala was president. Tell me about that time. Well, Danu, actually I was appointed chairman of uh, Sri Lanka Export Development Board. And then subsequently I got this appointment also. So I had to take a choice between these two options. Um, I mean, the first time <coughs> that I decided that I'm going to serve the country on a full-time basis uh, because we come from the private sector. Mm. Uh, I was actually stunned the day I walked into the Sri Lankan Tourism Promotions Bureau where I, I just saw a handful of people, you know, walking and doing some work in a dongle. So, then I walked up to one of them and said, you know, this is supposed to be the top brand marketing company uh, in, this, in this country. Uh, what are you guys doing with a dongle? Mm. And, and why is it that you have just a few people here? And, and I was told that majority of them have gone back to Gampaha. <coughs> so here was I sitting on a chair without no people to work. So the whole process had to be started where we had to look at the total organization structure, uh, identify what are the jobs that have been vacant, uh, you know, the whole structure of advertising, uh, interviewing <coughs> and recruiting <coughs> happened. And I'm so happy that even today as I speak, 99% <coughs> of 
of all those whom I recruited way back in 2015 are yet serving and they have served successive chairmen uh, and which means that you know the metal that we had picked up was right. So that was my first christening mm. uh, to tourism. Brilliant. Kishu, how was it mm. when you took over? Well, um, I must tell you how I took over. And, and also you had a bomb in, bomb in the middle of all of it. Yes, I yeah. mean that was a huge challenge you know, for the entire industry and um, I had to basically lead the, the whole effort mm. you know, from the front. But uh, my appointment was of different nature. Uh, I was actually invited by the industry. Um, invitation came and I had no reason whatsoever to accept it. So I kept on rejecting, rejecting, refusing. And then uh, there came a time when I had done a little bit of research to try and ascertain as to how valuable tourism is for the country's economic development. When the, I just looked at it and then told myself, I've been right throughout working for US multinationals. You know, prior to taking over tourism for 30 plus years, I've been working for US multinationals. And in the process created to, you know, Sri Lankan records as well. Uh, then I thought, okay, I have, earned enough and uh, this is the time I should give something back to the society. Not that I've not been doing it before, but I thought this way you can make a uh, you know, greater contribution to the country's economic growth. Mm. So with that intention in mind, I accepted it, but with one condition where I told the industry to tell the minister then, Honorable um, Jona Maratunga, that I should be able to issue a press release saying that I have accepted an invitation by the industry and, and that uh, it uh, wasn't a political appointment. So minister agreed and then I took over and we were cruising alone and, and uh, we were basically looking at the previous strategies and uh, we came up with a quick plan to try and strengthen it and then you know focus on new areas uh, that you know could give us uh, the right returns. So we were cruising alone and, and uh, we were achieving good results, but unfortunately, uh, on uh, the 21st of uh, April, uh, Easter Sunday, attack took place. This same hotel uh, was attacked as well. So with, within 15 minutes, uh, you know, I uh, from home came to office, parked my car, I was not having the drive on that day, and then crossed over to this hotel right behind had a had a look at the devastation. Uh, nobody could access uh, have access to the the location, but obviously with the tourism police and STF uh, being the tourism head, I walked in. So obviously that had a huge blow on uh, the 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 growth plans. You know we had, but uh, glad to say that within eight and a half months we managed to recover, and uh, and that was you know kind of a world record as well. We had done a uh, lot of uh, case studies, or I have looked at case studies, and case studies uh, proved that uh, a country would take minimum 13 months to recover. Uh, our, our situation was uh, more fierce uh, than the, the situations the other countries had gone through. I mean, we looked at uh, French attack, uh, we looked at uh, UK, London attack, Bali attack, to you know, uh, all those. Uh, incidents that had taken place no, prior to our incident yeah. here. So um, glad that together with the team uh, we managed to recover, recover so fast but unfortunately thereafter COVID came and struck us and that took a different uh, turn. Brilliant. So this is just the background to how they are involved in this. Uh, on a personal level, both of these gentlemen have contributed so much. Uh, I have known Rohanta for a very long time, uh, someone who has pressured me to first study and then to lose weight. Uh, <laughs> one of it has happened. <laughs> other one, it has been the other way around. But uh, talking about tourism, uh, this show is happening the day after uh, the current um, person who was holding the post has resigned. Uh, so uh, Himali resigned yesterday. Uh, so we are recording the day after. Uh, I wanted to ask, let's start off with the fundamental. Sri Lanka is such a small country. Mm. Now, even when we are going through this financial crisis, everyone seems to say, we have a small country, we can't just bring it, up, bring it back immediately. You know, we just need a small amount of billion dollars and we are back, back on track. Why, it being such a small country, why is it so hard to make it the destination to travel into? I will give it to you. See, when it comes to 
developing your strategy and making it happen. The, the most important thing is leadership. You need to have strong leadership, <coughs> uh, clear thinking and you need to have a mandate to make it happen for at least a never seven to eight years. I mean that's what the time duration that you require uh, to really build a brand. Now the question is that in Sri Lanka we have had around 70 to 75 plans and, and people keep changing uh, you know almost like every year. Yeah. You know, and so when they change, do they change the people, the system, the progress that have been done? That's what has happened, Dano. You know, uh, if you take, it's not only the tourism industry. I mean, I sat on the tea board for 10 years. Uh, you know, when we were doing the marketing plan for the tea board, uh, uh, you know, we suddenly realized there are 73 plans that has happened. So what happens is that you don't allow any brand to get traction. Oh. Now, concurrently, if you take other competitor brands, let's say, for example, uh, you know, say Maldives, uh, you know, for the last 35 years, they've had only six plans. And, and during that s tenure of seven to eight years, you know, you have one person who guides it. So, so that kind of consistency is not there. And to my mind, that is the most <coughs> important issue that, that we, we need to address. Yeah. Uh, I still remember when I went a few years back actually, uh, when I was working in radio full time, I was invited to the Tourism Bureau for the launch of their Instagram account. <laughs> and I was like, we are like a generations late, but it's actually we are at least starting somewhere. We'll speak more about what made these two gentlemen leave, because I think that's also another problem we need to ask when we do come back to Instagram. Welcome back to the show. So, one of the key problems is the fact that we are losing people with knowledge sitting on a particular appointed office and running the show <coughs> for a long period of time. If you take them individually, they have contributed so much to their companies, to their organizations, they have actually been awarded and respected for it. But why is it so hard to mm -hmm. sit on a state chair and do it? And also sometimes I feel the private sector mindset is wonderful. We stick to discipline, we never get, we, if we do take, if we, if we are 10 minutes late, we'll get a memo. You know, we are trained to be on time for things. Tell me about it. I'm going to leave this open. So we'll start with Kishu and then to Rohan. Okay, start from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's how the whole thing is designed, uh, Dano. As to why I left, if you want me to really yeah. address that, I'll, I'll do that Please, later. Please, go for it. Ah, sorry. But, but it is, it is how it is designed. Uh, when a new minister is appointed, you are, you are expected to, you know, render in your, your resignation. So I gave in my resignation a day before uh, the presidential election. And again, I, I issued a, a press release saying that I'm stepping down, allowing the new minister to, you know, choose his choose own person, yeah. right? Obviously, when I stepped down, I made a very direct statement saying, I shall never ever accept tourism or any other public sector job, right? And I said it on several uh, media, you know, programs, uh, both in uh, English and in Sinhala. But despite that, we were both uh, invited uh, this time to by different parties. Uh, <laughs> Rohante is making faces. No, we, we both love the industry and that's why, you know, we are there. And to that's help why it hurts you all more. It hurts because it's very, you know, something, the industry is something very close to our heart because, I mean, I personally believe that tourism is the, uh, the only sector with which we can have quick results, Correct. right? I mean, ob obviously today, if you look at the rank, it's the third largest foreign revenue generator for the country. Mm. First being uh, expected remittances, second being apparel sector revenue third being uh, tourism. And we have been taught otherwise, you know, we were taught about rubber and this thing. Those days are long gone. We are not governed by the British anymore. Five, <laughs> five decades ago. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, so obviously, I mean, that is why we are, we are so concerned about the industry and that's why we keep our eyes and ears, you know, open yeah. to developments and when uh, bad things happen, you know, we feel hurt, at least I feel hurt, uh, you ask him. So anyway, uh, so the reason is that uh, you can't really do what you think is right 
in the government system, right? Uh, look at any government institution, you will always have at least two groups of people working against each other, not having consensus. And to support that entire, you know, ideology or the attitude or the, or the process, you have a book to go by. Oh. That book will have a word, a line somewhere for them to guard themselves against any uh, you know, disciplinary action yeah. being taken. So obviously it is designed in such a way where the right thing cannot be done, oh. right? And you asked a different question from um, Rohanta as to why the uh, industry uh, you know, has not been able to perform up to the desired level. Yeah. He said something and I uh, endorse that consistency, right? People have been coming and going and every person that has come in has changed the strategy and, and therefore we've not been able to build that ideal desired brand. But having said that, if I may go back to that question you asked from Rohanta, we already have a brand. If someone is saying that we do not have a brand, I would, you know, totally disagree with oh. that. We have a brand, but it can be repositioned. Uh, we can, you know, build greater brand equity. Uh, there is that process uh, to be, you know, taken Done. through. But we're being recognized, named as the best destination to, uh, you know, travel to. We're being winning that, you know, literally every second we year. We even won it in 2019, yeah, so e despite the bomb. How can one say that we don't have a brand? It's a myth. Uh, uh, Dano, for the sake of you know making statements, people are saying it. No, to me there is a brand, but and it's not uh, guided right. It's not is not you know properly crafted, and uh, there is no consistent you know brand uh, communication strategy. It keeps changing, uh, so all those issues are there. So to be able to resolve those, you need somebody who would come in, sit sit in the chair for at, at least, least five years, I would think, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and uh, Rohanta had no reason to earn, you know, from this job. I had no reason to earn, you know, from that job, right? But obviously, you know, we have other things to do. So we wouldn't go and sit there for five years. I'm not, I mean, I, I shall not accept Danu <laughs> again to place it on record. I shall never <laughs> ever accept any public role hereafter. Uh, and these for are good people reason. who could have contributed, but who have got burnt out. Yeah, now. so what I'm saying is, the position itself has to be repositioned. You know, oh. it has to be a, 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 a job, you know, that would pay the market price to somebody who's willing to come and sit there. Can anyone, like, just because somebody changes the government or the minister changes, party changes, but can't that position be gu guaranteed saying, okay, if you take this position, you have to serve for like this amount of years? So that is how other countries manage yeah. uh, the tourism strategy. <laughs> it to is only in this country that the chairman uh, changes, of, every time. Know, changes every time when the minister now, changes and the government even changes. Even now we have a new minister, we have a new, a new, new person, I don't know, not appointed still. But Rohan, tell me, how was it for you? See, Danu, my Why view... Why did you...? My view is slightly different. Hmm. See, uh, I worked for 17 years in multinationals. Uh, I've done five years of working for the UN. So when I decided to serve the country, I was prepared to adjust. Mm. I know that it was going to be very tough, <coughs> you know. Uh, uh, we know that public sector is not consumer oriented. We know it's riddled with bureaucracy. But then that comes with the job. And that's our challenge. And that's what I wanted to experience. Mm. So. Uh, be it the Export Development Board or Sri Lanka Tourism or Lanka Satosa, which I chaired, you know, uh, in each of those jobs, it was very challenging. But then we turned it around. But there was one thing which was not negotiable, and that was honesty. Oh. See, that was not negotiable. So, you know, when I was chairman of the Export Development Board at 8 o'clock in the night, I get a call saying to transfer a million rupees. Mm. to a particular country's account uh, for the travel of a relevant minister. I mean, I, for me, it wasn't a choice, mm. 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 you know. I just said no. And, and I just wrote my resignation, I left. And then within three days, the president called me at that time and said, you're not going anywhere. We know what happened. 
we want you to head the economic council, which I said sure, but free, you know. Uh, I'll work every day, three hours free, you know, and I go back to my private sector job. So, when it comes to tourism, you know, the first thing is that I looked at the brass tax. What is our problem here? The problem here is that, like Kishu very rightly said, we have a brand, but the question is that we are not known. The awareness around the world uh, through the research study that was done um, in 2010 was that it was about a 4 percent awareness level. Mm. And when you look at the top eight markets and ask yourself what is the uh, current propensity of somebody wanting to visit vis-a-vis -vis when you go and explain to them our product range, it like catapults into three times, which means that people don't know. Mm. I mean, even as we speak today, Danu, when you call me, I just did a quick research. Uh, you know, you have about 10% uh, of the people who would go to Yala, mm. of those who visit. Uh, only 22% of the people go to the eighth wonder of the world, which is Sigiriya. Now, if you were to go to Egypt, you will never Miss stay away from the pyramid. Of uh, in the pyramid. So, the question is that we have not created awareness of our product range. So, I realized that is the issue and then when I just asked, can I put an advertisement, you know, can I just put a communication campaign, I realized there is no ad agency. So, I asked everybody, how do you do this job oh. that you are running the brand communications of your country's promotions arm of tourism and, and you don't have ad agency. You don't have a communication partner. So, they said, no, that's not there. So, that whole process had to begin. And uh, fortunately for me, we had some fantastic professionals uh, uh, working in different parts. Like my sister organization, EDB, was headed by a chairman who was vice president of Nestle. So, so I put them all into this committee. And because of the credibility that existed, the top seven ad agencies of the world said, I'm coming in. And, and they would have spent, each person would have spent about 25 to 30 million developing the strategy. And two days before it was fi finalized, we were told that there were quarters of the government wanting to bring the eighth ad agency. So I immediately called my board and said, gentlemen, this is not on. I'm not going to give approval. And, and that was it. And the next thing we know is that all the boards were dissolved. Now, one of the taglines that I really am confused about, is it supposed to be So Sri Lanka or So Sri Lanka? I'm so confused. This particular tagline which fought its way, um, breaking all the lines that Sri Lanka was known for, was it worth its money? We're going to speak more about it. There was a lot of controversy around that as well. We're going to speak about that and also about, is there corruption in the Tony's board? And how does it actually happen? We do that. Welcome back to the show in conversation with Kishu Gomez and Rohan Tatu Korala about tourism in Sri Lanka and what do we have to expect as we move on uh, from the current situation. Now this tagline, So Sri Lanka, the O is a big one. In my opinion, I think what it stands for is the, the luck having a big hilak. That is what I personally feel it stands for. But what happened to this thing called So Sri Lanka? If we had to pay an ad agency and a group of people or creative heads to come up with the word So, literally it's that, it's just So, because Sri Lanka was already there. So I am quite confused about it. I may have offended a few people on this line, but yet please tell me, the campaigns that were there before and eventually it's at So Sri Lanka, how powerful is this campaign? We have launched the tagline, but not really being able to market it. And use it, where do they use it? No, they'll be using it. They'll be using it at uh, various Petro exhibitions. Stations. Various <laughs> exhibitions, you know, that take place on an annual basis. Yeah. Uh, they have been um, uh, media buying on CNN and few other global uh, TV stations. Uh, it's just that you know, they could not come up with an integrated uh, communication campaign to be able to get the traction. Uh, so, I mean, you can, you can uh, you know, talk about it being something not so aligned with what we need to, you know, do mm. in order to basically, uh, you know, increase the share of voice that you need to have uh, to be able to, you know, create a 
profitable, powerful, mm. uh, large enough brand. Um, it wasn't decided uh, by me or during my time. Yeah. It was something uh, that had been decided uh, long before I joined uh, tourism. And apparently it was not done by the tourism uh, office, but by a task force that was appointed, that was the name used. Task, task force. force that was appointed by the prime minister or the president then, which had so-called tourism legends and veterans. Mm. Uh, it is they who had uh, decided on that uh, based on whatever process they had gone through. And uh, all what I know is that there are certain unpaid bills uh, still of, of some people who had uh, traveled to uh, the UK um, on uh, state expenditure. Uh, so there are those stories uh, as well. No, it's important, you know, for you to come up with a tagline uh, that very well explains as to what the brand value proposition of Sri Lanka tourism is. Mm. Um, so while so Sri Lanka has, you know, certain unique strengths, provided you use it, you apply it uh, the, the right, right way. way. Correct. People, you know, have had their own, uh, you know, criticism about it as well. Uh, don't ask me if I like it or otherwise. Mm -hmm. It all depends on how, how you, you play. Yeah, true. If I had to carry that through, I would have certainly applied that tagline in such a way in order to create a unique uh, brand. Because in right. Sri Lanka, I don't know, many people know that is Sri Lanka's hashtag. So right. Sri Lanka is a Do we know? We don't. But whereas true. we know... Uh, um, <laughs> Malaysia truly Asia, which is that's right, that, which has been consistent, for you know, for, years. for so many years. Correct. And uh, yeah, I mean, truly Malaysia is is Malaysia, yeah. and then it is all about tourism products and you know brand value. One can you know go and enjoy, right? Definitely, from the cabin all the way down, yeah. you see it the consistency. consistently. Yeah. So I would like to you know go back to the the question you asked. Um, Rohantan and he talked about all the barriers that you have to navigate mm. uh, to be able to do what he right. Now it's so funny that having used all the marketing brains and brand brains you have employed by way of permanent employees attached to the Tourism Promotion Bureau, mm. uh, it then goes to the board. Obviously, you as the chairman, you know, would. Uh, uh, you know, have a role to play in bringing all the ideas together, coming up with a, with a proposal. And once you are convinced, ask the chairman, you present it to the board. Uh, board would ask million of millions of, you know, questions, which is... Uh, Are they you know, sensible questions? Sensible, sensible and not so sensible as well, depending on, you know, who, who sits on the board and right. whether they have biasness. I mean, we have certainly, you know, board members who are biased towards, you know, their own sector. I mean, those things are there in every government, uh, you know, institute, I, I, I believe. You know, the board approves it. Uh, obviously, board uh, comprises of, you know, all the uh, hoteliers with long years of uh, experience. hospitality experience. So, they have, uh, you know, certain um, contributions to make. Thereafter, it has to go to the treasury for treasury approval. Who looks at those brand campaign um, strategies uh, to be able to say yes or no to the budget uh, mm. that, that you have to finally incur? as the accountants. So how can this country build a brand, you tell me, when the accountants have the final say, say. and uh, they have the final judgment if the proposal can build the brand you desire or otherwise? So how does it sound uh, the, no, yeah. with your it marketing crumbles, experience? It crumbles at a so point where... I, I obviously face that uh, you know, situation. So these processes have to change. How was it for you, Rohanta, working with uh, this particular tagline and also uh, the previous taglines? Because it's a huge part of a country's branding towards the world. See, Danu, uh, taglines doesn't drive brands. You know, uh, well, what is your job? Your job is about, um, uh, you know, getting your brand a top of the mind brand. Uh, so if somebody says, I want to visit an island nation. I want to see so many things at a um, close proximity of, let's say, 
uh, three to five days. Uh, um, uh, how do I get that kind of exposure? So, so, and then you need to have Sri Lanka going up, and then maybe the other brands coming in as two, three, four. So that's my that's the way I would look at it. Uh, so that's the whole purpose of communication. And then, of course, uh, you know, to just leave um, a footprint in somebody's mind is where you have a tagline. Mm. I have no issue with regard to the tagline per se. I'm I'm having a more fundamental issue, which is that if we can't get our brand visible out there in the marketplace and increase our awareness level. I mean, you said at the start that tourism started in 1966, right? I mean, we are at 2022, mm. okay? And if you're saying that our awareness is only 4% globally, what are we, what are we saying? <laughs> yeah. Second is that if you do acid test and ask, go out there to any country and just ask, say Sri Lanka and what do you remember? I mean, they might talk about tsunami, they might talk about the War. Easter attack, now they might talk about the war corruption. and now they talk about that we are bankrupt. Yeah. So the question is that, you know, for me, Dano, the bigger issue is about, you know, how do you build a story? Now storytelling is the way forward. We are not telling those t stories around the world. That is our challenge. I mean, as I speak today, I mean, we are also, we are all, always looking at tourism or export income, right? We are only looking at the merchandise of apparel and mm. tea and rubber, like you very rightly said. But do you know that even tourism is also export business? Mm. You know, uh, export of services, Correct. where you export your people, your talent mm. to the world is huge. So if I take the IT BPO industry, which is about, which could be about a $5 billion, we are right now touching about one and a half to two, right? Now the question is that if you go and ask today, about the IT BPO industry, the first thing they say is that all the information that is going out to the me world is going through all the Indian news agencies. So Indian news agencies pick the uh, financial issue that we are having, the bankruptcy, the riots, you know, the political turmoil, the impact. They are taking this story and they are relaying it to the world. And the customers, the end customers are calling and asking these companies, is things stable? Oh. Don't you think that we should move our operations to Romania and Bangladesh? Mm. Because they have their sister companies Correct. there. So, so you see, the point I'm trying to say is that even today, what we require is not the debate of a tagline, Dano. What we need is how do we take this reality story of Sri Lanka to the world? This question about corruption, I really need to get into it. We'll speak more when we do. back to the show we are talking about tourism and I must give credit to a uh, lot of the Instagrammers Facebook uh, content creators YouTube content creators who have actually become the search engine of Sri Lanka they have portrayed Sri Lanka so beautifully it it is remarkable it could be from the basic isovadi that we eat at golf face all the way to a phenomenal hotel that has a story I think they have done their part as Sri Lankans and I'm so proud to say that even I had a show about Sri Lanka and uh, it, it just goes to say that um, the right people are not passionate as much as the people who are in the country are. But I wanted to speak about corruption because now we do get a lot of these messages especially now the public is questioning every sector, every area they're questioning about you know even who sits as the minister of this, why? Which is remarkable, end of the day people who are in the government sector are servants to the people of the country. Tell me, hmm. in a yes or no answer, is there corruption in tourism? There is. <laughs> there has to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 let's look at it, Dano. I mean, you give a, you, 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 I mean, let's be real that's, here. That's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> let's be real here. I mean, if somebody is going to be paid 25,000 rupees, that was your right. salary? Your chairman will get 63,000 rupees. 63,000? You can barely pump half a fuel tank. Right. So, and if you take that, so chairman gets 63,000. I, I think it was moved to 93,000 rupees. You and then perks, you, like well, you get a car and 120 liters of petrol. Ah, okay. okay. So, I mean, that's it. Okay. So, my question is that if a chairman gets that, you can just imagine how many else. Mm. 
the uh, what the salary structure and the is tail the rest and people of it. must be getting ten thousand so, to go. Yeah. Home. So then my question is, how do you live in a country where your liter of petrol is four hundred rupees, and your your if you take your basic necessity to live necessity to live in but there are ministers who believe that five thousand you know no is so so the point is that you know I, I'm I don't I what I'm saying is that unless you change our structure of remuneration corruption corruption will continue. will continue but is corruption forced upon by ministers I <coughs> when I said yes to the question mm. you asked I didn't you know mean the employees or employees only it's the whole system, system. that I was referring mm. to in my own response to you yeah so one it word starts response. from the Top minister all the way down. down to all the levels now so these fancy travels are they mandatory because I'm sure not everyone needs to go first class who's flying first class I'm just asking no one oh really chairman can't fly even business class on a how yeah. do you all go then forget about it <laughs> right um, I have in the luggage compartment <laughs> I have had of course you get updated because you are yeah, the tourism yeah. you know chairman and yeah, people you, know yeah. you so that's okay yeah. not a not a complaint as such but legally you can't according to papers you can't as per the policy you can't, the can't okay. right there have been certain chairmen who have gotten special approval because they have been over 70 years due to medical reasons special approval have been granted for, you know, for them, them to, to fly can't sit through, yeah. whether he's really sick or otherwise he and I you know do not know <laughs> But anyway, leave that aside. I have had situations where parents or employees have personally spoken to me because I am a per, uh, you know people's man. You oh. know it, uh, Danu. Anyone can you know approach me. I would talk to anybody you know very nicely. I respect people. Uh, so therefore, I've I've been inundated with calls from parents. You know, telling me, sir, you know, my daughter, my son, you know. Uh, the, the graduates, you know, from this uh, university, foreign, local, da da da, and uh, they've been there for eight years, no promotions, uh, and uh, basic salary is only thirty-five thousand, and the take home is only twenty-five. They have funerals to go for, and you know, make certain contributions to buy uh, a wreath and you know stuff like that. So many weddings happening, so you have to you know go for a little makeup and then gift. Oh. So how can they survive? So I've had situations like that. It's very pathetic. But uh, having said all that, uh, certain employees there uh, are paid over 100,000. You know, some seniors who've been there for a, quite a long time. Uh, can they manage with that uh, is, is another, you know, a question altogether. But uh, the, the environment is as such and the conditions are as such, circumstances are as such that you would be tempted to Okay. be a part of you know some of these unethical uh, acts see well, take it look at it from another side how much does a minister spend to get into that seat of course so so if you look at that spend that you have and if you look at the income that you would earn let's say 500000 rupees a month you would get if you are a minister or a member of parliament virtually right uh, how do you uh, maintain yourself for a month? Thousand. And you know that Hold you know that you you have you hmm. have to go for at least two to three funerals for a for a for a month. I never knew funerals right? were so expensive. No, to no, attend. funerals is the place where you go get and make a contribution. See, funeral is a place you get undivided attention, mm. and when you walk in, your share of voice is hundred percent. Right. So what happens is that's a very strong marketing tool for a politician. Number two is, of course, you have to go and visit your mass. They have That's to come and meet you. you have to, when they come to meet you, you have to give them a cup of tea Correct. in your house. And tea now is the, expensive. So, so, so what happens is that, you know, wh why is it that every time when a new parliament or a new sector come in, that you have to appoint a new set of chairman? Because you know that that's part of the whole remuneration strategy that's going to be. Mm. So, so you know, you, 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 I mean, I, I actually went to Singapore and studied the National Council for Economic Development when I was studying to understand how Singapore works. Mm. What happens is that they pick the most talented people. They give them above private sector salaries. Mm. They then have you and them for good. And, they, and you agree on certain KPIs. If you don't deliver the KPI, you're, you're out. out. But then what happens is you don't have to rob to live yeah. because you're doing good, you're doing well. So, so we have to look at the 
systemic change in the country. And Danu, what happened on the 9th of May, what has happened to Sri Lanka today, is the best thing that this country could have ever happened. I'm thrilled. Because we have now come to a level. I know that we are the 50th, uh, in the last 50 years, we are the first country in the whole of Southeast Asia to be bankrupt. And it's a shame. I mean, I work for a global company in artificial intelligence. Whenever I go for a global meeting and First I come and, about and, and no, when I go and say, hey guys, I have delivered my number here, I delivered my number in Pakistan, I delivered my number in Maldives. The first thing they say is, but isn't your country in shambles? Mm. So they're basically they're saying, shut your mouth, guys. You know, you can't run your bloody country properly. You're trying to teach us how to run our countries, you know, our companies. So, so it's very sad. True, you know, we can't, we can't go to a global forum and address. Why? Because, you know, they, they look at us worse than Afghanistan. Yeah. Do you know that the inflation in Afghanistan is only 10 percent? And, and, and yesterday, it was declared that it is 45 percent non-food food inflation, which technically means it's 123 percent. So, we have come to a level where we cannot, we have to look at a huge transformation of change. So, the answer to your question, Danu, yes, uh, corruption exists in different walks of life, in different magnitudes. And by the way, I want to tell you, the highest corruption happens to be in the private sector and not in the government sector. Private sector is the people who are the worst. If you look at and analyze the last 10 years, the biggest corruption deals that has happened have been instigated by the private sector and not the government sector. Okay. Let's get into a break. We have one <laughs> final segment and I want to ask them, using their very creative marketing minds, how would they come out of this situation? This week more. Welcome back to the show. My final question to these two gentlemen are about if they have to run this brand that is right now, as we shoot this show, doesn't have somebody seated on that chairperson's seat, what would you do different? Keeping it short. Well, I would uh, first bring all the stakeholders together around one table and uh, would have a good deliberation on how we being basically performing when we were performing well and what has gone wrong thereafter and uh, you know would take a medium to long term weave and decide on a set of you know strategies get the buying in from the stakeholders and uh, you know work together as one team to execute it in the right direction so that is what is needed. Uh, obviously, in that, you need to come up with a huge communication campaign. And we've been talking about all the negatives, but uh, one thing I should mention is the fact that our industry has been growing, growing faster than uh, the global uh, average growth rate. Mm. In 2018, we had the highest number of 2.3 million tourists, True. recorded a revenue of 4.3 billion. Uh, if not for the East attack and uh, uh, COVID, COVID. We would have being at maybe uh, 6 billion to 7 billion level. Today. So when I took over, my priorities were how to expand the airport capacity and uh, how to, now he was talking about only a very small percentage going to Sigiriya, but with that percentage, uh, Sigiriya was uh, chock a block. People could not have access. We were talking about having it open for 24. So we have been getting numbers, right? So it's we should you know recognize the, the good positive work, as well. Positives as well. So we are talking about it as being, you know, so bad and and you know all this because you know we had this attack which we recovered you know from very effectively within a you know short period of time together with people. I'm not taking the credit for it. Uh, I'm basically, you know, showering the credit on the people who worked with me. I spoke to the hearts and minds of people, brought everyone together in different languages to be able to deal with different people. We got it done. And then COVID came. And then, okay, people are talking about bad leadership. Uh, he alluded to it in a different way. <laughs> so that basically upset the plans, the rhythm that we should have been on by now. So it's very sad. We need a leader. Uh, who would be, uh, you know, willing to listen to people, use all the talents and knowledge and, you know, skills the entire industry has, uh, and then, you know, coming up with a common set of strategies, driving forward with one, uh, you know, uh, direction, and, and, and uh, start delivering numbers. Rohanta? 
See, uh, Danu, the first thing I would do is that I would have a meeting with the President and the Prime Minister and put the facts on the table. First fact is that unless each of these ambassadors in Sri Lanka tell their respective country that people are allowed to visit other than for necessary travel, that, that particular clip which goes right, right now, mm. they have to remove that. Now that will not be done until the President and the Prime Minister get together and have number one political stability and put an economic development agenda on the table. I mean we have been talking for two, three weeks on this whole issue, understood. It has not come in and unless that is been done, the embassies are not going to free up the markets for people to travel. Mm. So for example, there is an Australian uh, cricket tour taking place in June, first week. Now let's assume that we want to attract the Australians to come to Sri Lanka. Now the question is, the first of all, the ambassador must say, it's people safe. are allowed to visit. Because ah. right now it's only absolute necessary it's travel that you can come. So there's no point me going and telling the whole world and the private sector all saying, guys, let's go out and do all the promotional work when they can't come in because the gate is locked. So, so that's the first thing I would do. Gota Gogama, do you think it's disturbing the tourism flow? It is definitely disturbing uh, and uh, we have seen the repercussions of it. Uh, it's not just you know that activity itself but what is happening around, around it. it. I love I love the concept of Gotagama. Uh, branding at its best. Not one cent spent. Everybody in the world knows about that it. That's true. Right? Number two is that if the, the architects of those guys are brilliant, the way they have architected the soul of this brand. You know, it's not just a uh, Gota Gama. It has a uh, uh, library, it has a cinema, it has legal advice, it has a, like the speakers con in the UK, you have an area where people can show their word. I mean, it's a masterpiece they to my mind. They have everything yeah. I mean, I would say, I would leverage that on the benefit to the Sri Lanka. You know, I mean, it has got global media mileage. I mean, where would you get this kind of media mileage? By its I negative mileage. You know? So, uh, yeah, so, so you have to, you have to, you know, yeah, so play you, the game. You have to, f so that's a reality, you know, Danu. What Kishu said is true. That's a reality. Gotagama is right now the voice of people. Now the question is, how can you use the voice of people to bring out that kind of share of voice in the global media saying how people of Sri Lanka are beautiful. Mm. And end of the day, even when you look at the airport exit survey, Right, the survey doesn't say that they can remember any of these key uh, features of Sri Lanka. Yeah, but the the when you ask them, why would you want to visit? 85% of people say, I will visit Sri Lanka again. And why? People are For the people, the smiling face of Venus. So we can use that as a as a as a as a positive. That's the point I'm saying. Brilliant. Thank you so very much for the time. Thank you for the contribution, the knowledge shared on this show. Absolutely amazing. I wanted to get an inside scoop to it. Uh, that's about tourism and hopefully Sri Lanka is going to go stronger and we are going to have a future that is remarkable for all of us uh, without letting everyone leave, uh, but letting everyone come in. And that's what we hope to see in Sri Lanka and that's what I, we all work towards. On that note, we wrap things up. Thank you so very much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. We will see you soon with another cool episode to take it down until then. It's a wrap. Right.